Hi and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G and today we'll be focusing on the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. This pictogram represents a section of the electron transport chain within the inner mitochondrial membrane of a mitochondrion. Just to clarify the location of each of these particular segments, here is a quick diagram of a mitochondrion. Now, beginning with the center, this is the matrix. So this area here represents the matrix within the center of the mitochondrion. Then we have this convoluted area. And this convoluted area represents this section, the inner mitochondrial membrane. So this section here represents the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now this outside layer or membrane is the outer mitochondrial membrane which is represented here, the outer membrane. And then we have a space. So we have this space in between the inner and the outer membrane. And that space represents the intermembrane space or IMS. So in essence this section here represents a magnification of just one of these areas here. Now within the matrix of the mitochondrion we have the citric acid cycle and the main objective of the citric acid cycle is to generate reduced coenzymes that carry high energy electrons to the inner mitochondrial membrane. One of the most important electron carriers is NADH. So this is the reduced version of NAD+. So NADH carries its high energy electrons from the citric acid cycle and offloads them at this first complex and the energy that's derived from those two electrons pumps protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space. The electrons then are shuttled by a carrier molecule that's located within the inner membrane called coenzyme Q10 from complex 1 to complex 3 where the electrons are then transferred to another carrier molecule called cytochrome C, which then transfers those electrons from complex 3 to complex 4. At complex 4, the electrons are shuttled back down and into the matrix. Now, in addition to NADH, the citric acid cycle also produces FADH2, which also shuttles high energy electrons from the citric acid cycle to the electron transport chain. The only difference is that it docks at complex 2 instead of complex 1. Now it offloads these two electrons at complex 2 and then coenzyme Q10 comes along and picks up those two electrons and takes them to complex number 3. From then on, these two electrons follow the same route as the two electrons that, are, that were offloaded by NADH in complex 1, making their way eventually back to the mitochondrial matrix. So in short, CoQ10 has two jobs. Number one, it shuttles electrons from complex 1 to complex 3, but it also shuttles electrons from complex 2 to complex 3. This movement of electrons via these complexes creates an electric current and it's this electric current that fuels complex 1, 3 and 4 to pump protons from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. This in turn creates an electrochemical gradient where we have a high positive charge within the intermembrane space and relatively low positive charge within the mitochondrial matrix. 
Eventually the protons make their way to ATP synthase. ATP synthase connects the intermembrane space with a mitochondrial matrix and allows protons to move along their electrochemical gradient. As those protons are shuttled down, they release their energy and that energy is used to fuse ADP with phosphate to generate ATP. You will note that ATP synthase has two main units, the FO complex, which basically acts as a shaft connecting the intermembrane space with the mitochondrial matrix. In addition, we have the F1 complex, which acts as a turbine that spins at a rapid rate, fusing ADP with phosphate to create ATP. Once the protons have moved back into the matrix, they then meet up with these initial electrons that started their journey back at complex one and complex two. The electrons join with the protons to produce hydrogen atoms. These hydrogen atoms then combine chemically with oxygen. Now oxygen is brought to the mitochondria via red blood cells. So the oxygen combines with the hydrogen to create what is termed metabolic water. Generally, this is termed the last step of mitochondrial respiration. So in short, the citric acid cycle generates reduced coenzymes carrying high energy electrons to complexes within the inner mitochondrial membrane. So in short, the citric acid cycle produces NADH, which moves to complex one, offloads its two electrons, becomes NAD, goes back to the citric acid cycle to become reduced again and repeat the cycle. The same thing happens with FADH2. So the citric acid cycle generates FADH2, goes to complex two, offloads its two electrons, becomes oxidized, becomes FAD, goes back to the citric acid cycle where it's reduced, picks up a further two electrons and brings it back to complex two. One more note, you should be aware that acetyl-CoA fuels the citric acid cycle. As long as there is an abundant supply of acetyl-CoA, the citric acid cycle will continually produce NADH and FADH2, which in turn fuels the electron transport chain to generate ATP via oxidative phosphorylation. Finally, let's have a look at the positive regulation of the electron transport chain. So what factors increase the rate at which the electron transport chain operates and generates more ATP. So these four factors would increase the positive regulation of the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain would be working faster, generating more ATP. If the cell had a high concentration of ADP, a higher concentration of inorganic phosphate, more oxygen and more NADH arriving at the electron transport chain from the citric acid cycle.